this critical election incident public protocol report. That's a lot of words there, pretty wordy, but it's out and there's a lot in it. What's the main takeaway for Canadians? Yeah, the main takeaway is essentially that there was an attempt at interference in the election, but it did not meet the threshold to actually interfere with a free and fair election. This is something that the government has been saying for a number of days now, and certainly this does give that line a little more credence going forward. And it certainly is an effort here to try and reassure Canadians that don't worry, the last election in this country was decided by Canadians. Have a look at some of the report now talking specifically about these threats from foreign actors such as China. One of them um, in the report says that CSIS expressed concerns that China notably tried to target elected officials to try and promote their national interest and encouraged individuals to act um, as uh, act at proxies on their behalf. Now, what that means is essentially making it more difficult to see who was behind these attempts. There are some examples, such as a 2021 editorial in the Global Times, which is a tabloid that does have connections to the Chinese Communist Party, and it took aim at the Conservative Party's platform suggesting that the party would break off relations with China. Uh, there's also parts uh, that did suggest as well uh, on this Chinese um, um, chat app called WeChat saying uh, it falsely claimed that a bill was introduced by former Conservative MP Kenny Chu that would unfairly target the Chinese community. Now, part of this report as well also looked at interference domestically here noting that that was a factor as well. Part of the report that was uh, prepared by Morris Rosenberg, top former um, civil servant, saying that the uh, federal government should also look at lowering the threshold for when to inform Canadians about the possibility of interference. But on the domestic side, have a look at this as well, uh, saying that extremist, racist, and anti-government views that proliferated online were also a factor in what we were hearing online and the potential for affecting um, the uh, election as well. Part of that, you'll remember uh, when you talk about that sort of anti-government sentiment, I mean, part of that really sort of came out in London, Ontario in September. You remember that rock throwing incident at the prime minister. Um, now, all of this together is something that the government has looked at. Yesterday, Dominic LeBlanc, the intergovernmental affairs minister, appearing on Power Play with Vashi Capellos, saying once again that this does prove um, that the integrity of the election did hold. Have a listen. This threat is not new. This threat is not unique to Canada. The good news is the measures we put in place, we believe, and it was confirmed by the report today, uh, resulted in no foreign interference or even other electoral interference such, a, such that the result of the vote would be compromised. Now again, Marcia, one of the recommendations of this report is that the government consider lowering the threshold for when Canadians will be informed as to a possible threat possibly affecting an election, wondering whether or not that should actually be done during the election period. That is something certainly the government will think about going forward. Okay, so uh, just quickly then, Mike, please, how could this change the approach of the opposition parties in today's House of Commons committee meeting? Well, we've all already heard from the Conservatives who are basically saying that this uh, report lacks a little bit of credibility because Rosenberg was actually part of what is known as the Trudeau Foundation that was set up, uh, you know, under the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. And so that's why they're saying that this uh, report really isn't uh, extremely credible. Also calling on the uh, Prime Minister to, to just testify as to what he had received in terms of the intelligence reports. Um, so we're expected to hear later on today from the National Security Advisor to the Prime Minister, Jody Thomas. She is one of the biggest names that is going to be testifying at this committee starting at 3 o'clock. We'll have full coverage here on News Channel. Okay, Mike, thank you for that.